Hello boys and girls. Today we are going to look at a book on reading A to Z. book is called Strange Plants. <clears throat> As you can see here, we have the title. We also have written by Kira Freed. Remember, written by means that the person who wrote the words in the book. Now, we've been talking about informational texts lately, which means that they're nonfiction. And we know that somebody didn't illustrate this picture here. It's a photograph. Somebody took it with a camera. So there is no illustrator. Okay, here we have the title page again. Different picture. Remember, this picture is probably something to do with the book. And the title, Strange Plants. And again, the author. When we think about plants, we often think of trees flowers and grass. Like most plants, these plants have green leaves. They also have roots growing in the ground. So a couple things to pay attention to on this page. Right down here it tells us what kind of daisies these are, these flowers are. This is called the caption, remember? And also I want us to pay attention to how right here I wrote that. These words are separated by a comma because it's listing three things. Remember when we have a list, we separate each noun by a comma. So it's not just something I'm telling you to do, it everybody does it. Okay. Let's move on to the next page. Okay. Some plants are not like most plants, and this book is about some of these strange plants. Now you'll know from our science unit on the desert, this is a cactus. Plants called air plants live in trees high above the ground, and their roots are not buried in the dirt. Instead, they grow on tree branches. They take moisture from the air, not from the soil like most plants do. So we've learned before that most plants take their nutrients, water, air, from the soil. But these plants take it from the air. So they're a little different. And our caption down here says, air plants growing on swamp trees. So this tells us that plants that take air and use air to get their nutrients and oxygen are in swamps. And if you don't know what a swamp is, from this picture, you could easily tell that it has something to do with the wetlands because there's water here. Can you imagine plants that eat meat? Well, there are such plants. They eat insects, spiders, and even some other small animals. One well-known meat-eating plant is the Venus flytrap. Here's our caption, Venus flytrap, and here's what it looks like. Its leaves look like traps. They have small spikes along their edges. When a critter walks inside a leaf, the leaf snaps shut. The critter is trapped. So here we see in the picture that, that this picture shows us a fly caught in a Venus flytrap. The sundew is also a meat-eating plant. It has many sticky hairs on its surface. Insects landing on it get stuck. The plant digests the insect. The giant sundew plant of Australia even eats small frogs. And let's look here at this word. Digests. Some of you might not know what digest means. So 
we've been talking about how plants, some plants eat meat or bugs. So from this, you can infer that digests means or has something to do with eating. Some plants steal food from other plants. The daughter plant sends root-like parts to another plant. It sucks food and water from the plant. It's a parasite. A parasite lives off another living thing. And again, you might not know what the word parasite means. But from this paragraph, you can tell that a parasite sucks food and water from another plant and it lives off another living thing. So when we're reading, even in other books, we need to start doing this, looking for context clues around in the paragraph to tell us what words mean. Many flowers have bad smells that attract insects. The stapula flower smells like rotting meat. Flies like that smell, so they fly into the flower. Special powder gets on their bodies. They take the powder to other flowers. The flower uses the powder to make seeds and grow new plants. And if you recall from when we learned about plants in science, we know that sometimes insects help us spread pollen or seeds, and that's how other plants are formed. But this plant is unique and different because it smells like rotting meat. Some plants look like stones. The plants in this picture are called stone plants or living stones. They live in very hot, dry places. They hold water very well. Their shape helps to hide them so that animals do not eat them. And again, we see our caption. It says stone plants. Some cactus plants are covered with wool-like hairs. The wool protects them from daytime heat. It protects them from nighttime cold. The wool also helps the cactus plant hold moisture. And this is called an old man cactus. So maybe right now you're thinking, why is it called an old man cactus? And the answer is probably because it looks like it has gray hair. And we know that when people get a little older, sometimes they get gray hair. Some trees and shrubs grow out of solid rock. They grow high where the winds blow strong. Their roots reach down into small cracks for moisture. As the roots grow, they split the rock. Now this is not so far off from things that we see like on the Iron Shore. Because on the Iron Shore, sometimes we see plants growing in the cracks. Some plants have animals living inside them. Ant colonies live inside plants. They use spaces in the plant's stem as houses. Some spaces are used for raising young ants. Other spaces are used for garbage. The ant plant uses some of this garbage for food. So the ant uses the plant garbage for food. Ugh. There are many more kinds of strange plants. Bamboo makes noise when it grows. Some Australian orchids grow and flower completely underground. There are many amazing plants in this world, in the world. Okay, here we have our index. So if you wanted to look up any of the kind of special plants we talked about, it tells you which page it's on. And that is the end. So from the strange plants, you have a writing page. And this writing page says, in this book you read about several different living things. There are plants that are plants, and yet look very different from one another. How do these differences help each plant to survive in the environments? So what you should do is think about the type of plants that we saw. For instance, we saw
We saw air plants. Okay, I'm going to go back to the book and that way we can look at the index. to find out the types of plants that we saw. So we saw air plants, ant plant, bamboo, cactus, meat-eating plants, parasite, stapula, stone plant, sundew, and the Venus flytrap. So what you need to do is pick one of those plants and tell about its differences. So these plants, remember, don't just grow in the ground and get all their nutrients from soil. They have something special about them. So you need to pick one plant and write about how its difference, how its difference help it survive in its environment. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much. And I'm excited to see your response tomorrow.